Should you really care about design patterns? There are books devoted to them. And heck, even I post videos about specific design patterns. But do you really need to care? Well, if you're new to design, it can be a little bit overwhelming and actually add a lot of unneeded complexity. I'm gonna cover how I think about design patterns or rather how I don't think about design patterns. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. Like most videos, the information that I'm relaying really is just my gained experience, my gained knowledge. And a lot of this has to do with this video is how I've progressed as well as how I've seen other developers progress through their careers. Now with design patterns specifically, I think the way that the, the kind of bell curve of this, and I'll illustrate this in a minute, is that early on in your career, you're kind of oblivious to them. Maybe you know or have heard or read some kind of basic design patterns and people complain about certain ones or whatever the case may be, but you kind of just stay clear of them. You're trying to write simple code basically. But as your career progresses and you kind of face different challenges, you start either reading blog posts or videos like mine and seeing about different uh, patterns that you can apply. And therein lies generally the problem of thinking, oh great, I just learned this new uh, pattern, but this can really apply to like being kind of caught in the train of the new hotness of frameworks or languages or just different concepts that you, you gain knowledge or, or learn about and you want to apply them, but you're applying them for really no good reason. Now that sounds absurd to apply this for no good reason, but seemingly every developer that I've ever met, including myself, at some point falls into this trap. And then at some point you then do realize that you're kind of adding unneeded complexity and you kind of go back to simpler times, simpler code. Now this is what I mean of this bell curve. And I've seen this diagram in other ways and I've thought about this for a long time now is that, like I said, at the very beginning, in terms of amount of experience, amount of knowledge you have, you're writing simpler code. You're not writing necessarily complex code. It is highly coupled usually, but then for some reason, it's just overboard in complexity, overboard on things you don't need to be adding, overboard on applying patterns you do not need to be applying. And then at some point going back down, realizing, okay, let's get back to simpler times, but with that gained experience of what not to do in terms of coupling and cohesion. So should you really care about design patterns? In some sense, no, don't care about them. And the reason being is because if you, can fa if you fall in this trap of trying to apply them needlessly, you're gonna get into a world of unneeded complexity and you're adding a whole lot of trouble to your system. Now, having said that, in all of my videos that I post about specific design patterns, I'm always explaining the problem that they solve. So you do care about them if you, if you wanna know what's out there or different ways to solve different problems, maybe you realize, oh, actually I do have this problem and this is a solution. Maybe it fits in my context, maybe it doesn't. Or it's, I don't have this problem, but good to know, maybe throw it in some memory. And hopefully you realize at some point, if you do have that problem, there is kind of a named pattern to this. And that really is a key is about it being a named pattern. Cause this basically is saying that if you have two developers and you have the, a problem and you're talking about a solution and it has a name, you can refer to that name design pattern. And you're both on the same page about, oh, I have this problem. I want to implement X pattern and you both know what you're talking about instead of having going to the nitty gritty details about how that pattern is applied. So for me, really design patterns and name design patterns are really just about communication and understanding between developers. Now on a personal note, and according to other people who have left comments on some of my videos, is that I've often run into a problem, come up with a solution, implemented it, and not till later did I realize that that solution was actually a named pattern. There's a name for it, what I actually came up with as a solution. In the vast majority of cases, this has been my situation. So that's why I said at the beginning on how I don't think about design patterns. They're just problems, they're solutions. If I realize at some point, oh, there's a name to it, great, now I can understand what it is. I can explain that and communicate that with other developers like I do in videos. But the key point here is that you have a problem. You yourself came up with a solution. Whether you realize that it's a design pattern or not, you're trying to come up with a solution, not just blindly trying to apply design patterns. Now you may be thinking, really? People are just blindly throwing design patterns, a part of their project, a part of their system and solution? 
Yes, they are. And if you've been a part of that, whether you've done it yourself, make sure to leave a comment, some of the war stories, so other people can see that this actually is a thing. So the last thing I wanna to touch on here are just being in a situation or having problems and you're coming up with a design pattern or using a design problem to solve that problem that you might not just need to have. Just eliminate that problem that you think you have. So to illustrate this, and I talk a lot about this in some other videos or I have on Twitter as well, is most famously the repository pattern. And I have nothing, first and foremost, against the repository pattern. And I have videos I'll link in the description where I think it's applicable and how you should use it. But as an illustration to this, if you have an application or system or service, and I'm illustrating here with the boxes on top, and let's say it's a large system where there's a lot of interactions with your database. And because you wanna uh, abstract those interactions, you create a repository. So you have a repository that's basically saving entities, getting entities out, and you do all your data access is encapsulated in that repository. So it's a way to segregate all that data access code. Great, perfect. But really, what's the issue here? Do you really want to um, need that abstraction? Or really is it that you should be limiting the coupling? You have all this code that instead of being coupled to your database, okay, that could be a problem. Now you're just uh, um, basically coupled to your repository. To me, the problem here is not that you need a repository, it's that you need to limit the coupling. You need to segregate your application in different boundaries and then from there decide, once you've made kind of these vertical boundaries, how you wanna do data access and whether you need a repository within that context. So you can start isolating these things. If you organize code and do this kind of these vertical separation in the boundaries, maybe you decide in one particular scenario, yes, I wanna use a repository here because I'm kind of, I have a, maybe a domain model and that's how I wanna fetch things out. In some situations, maybe you have a limited number set of features, a limited number set of tables or documents, whatever you're dealing with, and that there really is no value in adding a repository, adding more indirection. You can just have direct data access. So you're deciding this kind of per boundary. So whether you should have just one made a uh, large repository that's coupled everywhere through your application code, segregating this. But this really does come back to, do you actually have the problem that the pattern is solving? Maybe you do, and then yes, apply that pattern. Oftentimes though, I get the feeling that there's patterns being applied when one, you don't actually have that problem, or two, maybe you shouldn't even have the problem to begin with. So should you care about design patterns? To a degree. It's not the end of the world if you don't know the names or have applied all of them. Just be applying the ones that actually apply to you. I'll keep posting videos on them because I do think it's helpful. Even if you don't have the problem right now, you may remember it and then revisit it later if you do come into that problem being like, oh yeah, I watched a video from Derek on that. Let me go check that out again. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you found this video helpful, make sure to leave a comment. And if you want to get access to a private Discord server where you can communicate with other like-minded developers about software architecture and design, you can join my channel. Check out the links in the description. And as always, please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.